Hey, what's up DIYers, Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're working on a TV and we're gonna show you the step-by-step -step process on how to replace your front panel or screen. Let's get started. All right, DIYers, in front of us is the 55 inch Samsung TV. I'm going to turn it on and I wanna show you. We've got not only vertical lines, we've got horizontal lines and we've got what looks like an impact point. However, when we turn the TV off, there is no actual crack on the outer screen. It's internal. We are going to replace this entire panel. At this point, I've got the TV face down or panel side down on a soft surface. We have a blanket and we are going to remove this back plastic panel. On the edge, the entire perimeter around the panel, you have several Phillips screws. Screwdriver in hand and spend a couple minutes and remove all Phillips screws. And as far as the base, we actually have to remove these four Phillips screws to remove this entire base because in most cases there will be screws underneath this portion. Making progress, all Phillips screws are removed. Again, we had to remove that base to gain access to three additional screws. Might not be important to you, but it's extremely important to us. We laid out the screws in the manner that they are installed and secured inside the TV. We want the exact same screws going in to the exact same holes they came out of. From here, if you've removed all your screws, this back panel should come up extremely easily. If it's not, spend a couple seconds and find the screw that you're missing. Again, if all screws are removed, this back panel should lift up very easily and just slide it out of its top slot here and remove it. With the back panel removed, we have much better access to all the internal parts we have to remove from this old panel. And you've got your main power board, ribbon wiring, main board, Wi-Fi module, IR sensor, power button, and your speakers. Let's start with the speakers. Here is the connection tab on the very bottom. Push down and you'll notice the top raises. Simultaneously pull back. Whatever you do, do not pull on these wires. You do not want the wires separating from the connection point. That would not be good. Each speaker has a blue rubber grommet, and all you have to do is carefully pull that out of its hole, just like that. See that? That's all it is. They're pretty easy to pull out. You've got your Wi-Fi module wiring. Go ahead and remove that from the top clips of your speaker, and you'll do the same thing over here. From here, carefully shift your speakers out and off of the panel. I stack the speakers, there they are, pretty neat, huh? Back to the panel, and you've got your remote sensor, shift that out, you've got your power button, it just shifts out. And this is the only time I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver tip, and that is to remove this Wi-Fi module. And all I'm going to do is insert it and carefully shift the Wi-Fi module up. This is plastic, the last thing you want to do is break it. After shifting that connection up and out, the opposite side will shift out very easily. Come to your main board. We've got two ribbon wiring connections and do not use tools. Take your fingernail, come to the very underside and pop each up. Just like that and carefully shift your ribbon wiring out of its connection. And you've got two additional ribbon wiring connections down here. Do the exact same. After that, you've got tape. You will carefully remove this tape. It will stay connected to your ribbon wiring. And in most cases, you want it to. You want to take this tape with you to install the ribbon wiring to the back side of the new panel. Be careful as you do this. You do not want to harm this ribbon wiring. And as far as the ribbon wiring, we can now carefully shift this out and set that aside. Back to your main board. In most cases, this connection point is more stubborn than this connection point, so we're going to remove it from the main power board. And the 12 is on the top. Pinch the outer edges and shift this connection apart. Just like that. And your tape. Again, you want to take the tape with you to your new panel. And as far as removing the main board, you have connection spring-loaded tabs on the underside of your main board and here's your shifting point first you will carefully lift it up over that little tab right there and shift it forward and it comes out of the little slots there i recommend resting your main board on a flat hard surface such as a wood table because the underside of these boards are very prickly and in the event that you rest that on a blanket or towel it may ruin your towel back to our main panel we are left with our main power board and one connection point right here pinch the outer edge 
and the 80 is on top for reference. And now we have Phillips screws, one on the top left, top right, two that secure your power cable connection to the main board, and this lower left-hand corner. Go ahead and remove all those Phillips screws. After removing those screws, carefully shift your power board up and off. Same thing, rest this on a hard surface such as wood. Do not lay it on a blanket or towel. At this point, let's go ahead and remove this old panel from our countertop and go open up the new panel. All right, DIYers, we are halfway through. You still with us? Good, let's keep going and finish this project. In front of us now is the replacement Samsung 55 inch panel and fragile. From here, just carefully unbox your panel be extremely careful looking inside it looks well protected in there as you can see and again just be very very careful as you pull this panel out of its packaging and box and it's best to have a second person helping pull that out of the box and in the event that you don't you've got the back portion and you want to lay it flat on the ground on its back as opposed to the front panel all i'm doing now is carefully pulling it out of its package and it's still resting on this inflated packaging. Making progress, it's out of the box, still protected by the inflated packaging, and you've got the Samsung word right there that is the bottom front portion of the panel. I carefully shifted the panel out of the inflated packaging, and the panel is now resting on top of both the left and right inflated packaging. I have now carefully removed the outer purple packaging. From here, I'm going to carefully pick it up and rest it on the countertop. All right, there's the old broken panel. Now it's time to get to work and install all of our parts back on the new panel. Ever so gently, rest the power board in place, and there's the back side of it. Again, very prickly, very gentle as you rest this in place. Next, verify your board is properly aligned. You got this little tab here. Make sure your screw holes are aligned. And all looks good. Let's go ahead and grab the screws and secure it. As you secure each screw, do not cross thread them and do not over tighten them. Power board is secured by all the screws. Now it's time to insert this connection point and make sure that the clips are in place and locked. Let's go grab the main board. Before resting this board in place, I do want to show you the back spring loaded tabs right there. And they're on each end. And all they do is slide into those little slots as shown here. Carefully rest the board in place. You've got this little notch here. You've got this little sliding slot there. Just shift it into place carefully, just like that. And verify your board is past that little notch and below it and locked. What we'll do next is grab this connection point and secure it to the main power board. And again, just be careful with these wires. You do not want to harm the wires or run into separating from your connections. Now to the Wi-Fi module, I'll set that aside. Grab your IR sensor, and that's what it looks like. It just slides in this little slot right there. And your power button slides right inside that little slot and right on that little tab there. Now to the Wi-Fi module, you've got these two slots here. Come in at an angle, insert one side, and then shift the opposite side into place until it clicks and locks, just like that. What I did next was grab the tape from the old panel that was securing this wiring to the panel and brought it to the new panel and secured that wiring. Now it's time to rest the ribbon wiring in place and secure it to the connections. I went ahead and carefully secured the bottom connections and to the top. Be extremely careful. Most important thing, make sure your tabs are fully open. If they are not, the ribbon wiring will not slide in as far as it needs to. See this black line? You want that all the way flush with the entrance of the connection housing and carefully shift that connection down and the line should be flush with this tab or not showing at all. You'll do that for both sides. Just like that. Let's go grab our speakers. Speakers in hand, again, they've got those little rubber grommets and you will carefully align those with the holes and these are very friendly. You just shift those and push them down into place. As shown here, the black and yellow wiring goes to your left speaker. And from this angle, it's the bottom right. But when you're looking at the TV from in front, it is the bottom left. And we'll do the same thing for this speaker. And from here, here's your Wi-Fi module wiring that secures into these two clips here. 
just like that. From here, grab your connection point, make sure it's not tangled, align it properly, and secure it until it clicks. Just like that. You'll know it's properly secured when it is clicked in place and locked. What we will do next, verify you're not leaving any tools or screws behind or loose parts. On each corner, we've got this tape that we do want to remove prior to securing that back panel, because if we don't do that, then this will be stuck inside of it. Just spend a couple seconds and remove your tape. Be careful as you do this. Do not apply pressure on the panel. After peeling the tape back, one last final view and inspection of all parts and connection points. From here, we'll go grab that back panel, rest it in place, and secure it. Carefully align it properly and rest it in place ever so gently. Back panel is now aligned and resting in place. And now it's time to secure all the screws. Just verify all your screw holes are visible prior to securing any screws. Panel is now secured by all the screws. We secured our base and do not over tighten it. From here, we'll shift the TV up on the base, plug it in and turn it on. Time to carefully remove the additional packaging on the panel and just be very, very careful. Making progress. Go ahead and plug your TV in, grab your remote and turn it on. And check that out, DIYers, no more vertical lines, no more horizontal lines, no more impact point on the bottom right-hand corner of the TV. We would call that a successful DIY project. And from here, it's unlikely. However, in the event that your remote only turns your TV on and off and does not allow you to change source settings, channels, or volume, you may need to reprogram your remote. And that is a quick, friendly DIY process. And we're not gonna bore you with that in this video. However, scrolling above is a step-by-step -step video link that you may find helpful to get your remote reprogrammed and aligned with the new panel. However, in most cases, if you're just replacing the panel, you will not have to reprogram your remote. But in the unlikely event that you need to, definitely check out that link. And we've got the old broken panel in the packaging, resting on the inflated packaging. We'll go ahead and put it in the box and dispose of it responsibly. At this point, I've got the TV up and running. Hopefully this helps. Do us a favor, blow the video. You'll see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. All right, DIY, our Samsung TV is all fixed. Just pulled out the 1984 Gibraltar TV. I've been bothering my grandma for years on this. I said, in the event that you ever want to get rid of it, let me know, I will take it off your hands. And I'll go ahead and Turn it on, I plugged it in. Hopefully it does not start on fire. That would not be good. A lot going on with this thing. Down here, you've got your tint, color, brightness. You got this little access panel right here. Check that out. Pretty neat, huh? And I'll go ahead and close that and turn the TV off. And just making a guess, this is the wood grain finish. I'm almost positive wood grain finish is not an option anymore in today's modern TVs. However, if they are, let me know and correct me on that. I mean, this thing is so cool. 1984 modern state-of-the-art technology. We absolutely love this. So what do you think, DIYers? Should we open it up, install a Wi-Fi module, and maybe try to watch some Netflix movies or some YouTube videos? Wouldn't that be awesome? Got our countertop back, time for lunch.